and by next weekend, beach weather, and that is why I'm smiling. All right, we're going to take so. you out. Yeah, live make a dollar, 7,000 HD right now. So I'll show you where the actual low is. Notice a few tiny wraparound showers are still in the mountain locations. Very typical as the system exits off to the east. Don't worry from the coast from the valley sections. No, no more rain and definitely no more thunderstorms expected for us overnight tonight. In fact, all we are going to be dealing with is this cold air. I mean, very cold low. That's the reason we did have those thunderstorms. Look at the record lows we had this morning. Now, UCLA, you thought you were cold at 41. Then there was Palmdale, 28 degrees this morning, and it is expected to be colder tonight. Ouch. Yeah. This is the reason I was smiling earlier on. For everyone that is just too cold, you're going to thaw out <laughs> by Thursday, Friday. How about Saturday? Yeah, it looks good. 83, even 84 degrees expected. Meanwhile, the mountains, you're going to go from the 40s to the 60s. So still fresh powder on the ground, spring skiing. I'm almost <laughs> a foot of powder. So beach weather, mountains, so You can have it both at its best. Meteorologist yeah. Indra Peterson is in for Garth Kemp. Yeah, it looks like we continue as we did early this morning to see more of these moderate and even heavier rain bands pushing through. You can see right here it's from the south as they push through to the north that they are developing. Now once you see the reds, we're starting to get into that three quarters of an inch an hour. The orange is about that half an inch an hour. At half an inch an hour is the threshold that we start to get concerned with, especially when it starts to head up towards the burn areas. So as you can tell as this loop starts over again, this is only about a three hour loop that we have lately seen some of these thresholds pushing through the burn areas. All that only means more runoff as it continues to fall down that hillside. Now there's basically two areas that continue to push through all morning long with the heavier bands. One is the one I just showed you, the second being farther down to the south, so right around Orange County. These bands continue to develop in the exact same direction, following the direction of the wind, and those pushed out towards San Bernardino, even towards the mountains. The only piece of good news here, even though we continue to see these very heavy rainfall rates, is that we are starting to now pick up some snow, so that'll mean less runoff. We'll have to wait for that snow to melt before that runoff occurs, so a little hint of good news in that area. Something I want to show you real quick as I zoom out very wide, this is one portion of the storm, the warm portion we've been really dealing with for the last several days. But notice out in the distance, see how we're seeing lightning, uh, definitely a big gap between the two. There's something going on. It's this right here is the reason we've been talking about tonight and through Wednesday being the biggest time period that we're concerned with the heaviest rainfall. It's when the thunderstorms drop, those heavier rainfall rates occur. First, let's start with this actual system. What we've been dealing with, remember, it's the winds that increase the highest rainfall rate. So there's the core of the winds right here in the jet stream. That's falling down to the south today. And then as we continue through the day, it's going to go more south to north. So it's really going to affect our south-facing mountain slopes. That's the reason we're talking about this heavy rainfall on those hillsides. Now, the other thing we're looking at, take a look. Again, this is that moisture band, the subtropical warm moisture air. And notice it almost looks like two systems out here. Look just to the north of us. That looks very different, almost like a complete different system. That's the low itself that now you can see this is where we're seeing those thunderstorms. That's what's starting to pull farther down to the south. So that's what we're concerned with. So here we go again. This is the warm moisture we've been dealing with the last several days. Now that second system is completely different. Now it's the same system, but it's the actual core low itself that brings the in the cold air. When these two clash together, that's when we have the chance for instability, the chance for thunderstorms, which really translates into the highest rainfall rates we've seen. Rainfall rates we haven't even seen yet. All this occurs as that cold front passes through overnight tonight in through tomorrow morning. So be prepared. We're going to be seeing rainfall rates anywhere from one to two inches an hour in perspective right now. We're only about a half an inch to three quarters of an inch an hour. It's about four times stronger than what we're seeing. Coastal sections look for another two to four inches. Foothills, mountains as much as eight inches, 10 inches in the San Gabriels and where we see the thunderstorms. And again, all this likely occurring late this evening, in the early hours tomorrow morning as that front passes. Front passing means colder air is with us. So the snow level continues to drop. We'll see a drop as low as about 4,500 feet, which could be a problem on the grapevine. A couple of inches there, but at least one to two feet of snow above 6,500 feet. So we're going to be monitoring that. So all this stays with us again. The toughest time period, not even here yet. Overnight through tomorrow morning, still lasting through Thursday. Really watching for even some afternoon thunderstorms on Wednesday. Then it dries out for a couple days. A little system kicks on through. Saturday evening, maybe in towards Sunday morning. Tiny guy. This isn't going to be the big deal here. The biggest concern is the next few hours as we go through the overnight period tonight and through tomorrow. And of course, we'll be here with you. We're going to come on at 4 a.m. tomorrow morning to talk about the storm as it starts to develop. Welcome back, you. everybody. Leslie it's Phillip. turning into more than just May gray. It's wet. Oh, yeah. It's raining. An actual cold front <laughs> in May. So very typical for this time of year. It's a system we'd normally see in the wintertime, but now it's making its way south through Southern California. And yeah, we actually have rain. We're taking you out live in the Godopler 7000 HD right now. Let me show you where that actual cold front is. It's that wave. You can see that leading edge there from Long Beach kind of making its way northward up towards Barstow. As you zoom in a little bit closer, you can actually 
actually see we have some rain out there. Look at the spots on the lens. Malibu seeing some light showers. And now we've actually seen that cold front even push farther to the south. So look at Long Beach, a spotty lens there as well. So this will be the story, especially through the morning hours. We could start to see a break in the cloud cover as we go through the afternoon, but then some scattered showers will still be possible even throughout the rest of the day. Wind advisory, that's the other story. Every time again, we have the onshore flow, those strong winds blow in the high deserts. So the Antelope Valley seeing some stronger winds than yesterday, not by much, but gusts today can go up to 50 instead of just 40 that we saw yesterday. So this is what we're watching. It's one low. It is parking itself right off the coastline. Now it sits here for the next couple of days. And notice when you look at the energy from yellow to red, red is when it's a little bit stronger. So that's what we're dealing with right now. I want to take you outside and show you a development that's going to change the weather from just yesterday. The marine there, the eddy actually kicked up that marine there. And lately, in just the last several hours, look at it start to fill in. Notice Oceanside and watch it kind of fill in up to the north. That's what we're dealing with at the coastline today. So this should give us some relief. That sea breeze is going to kick in and we'll start to see those temperatures back off today. Orange County coastal sections actually have a dense fog advisory till about 8 o'clock in the morning. Some places visibility less than about a quarter of a mile. So this is what we dealt with yesterday. Downtown set a new record of 91 degrees. We should have been in the low 70s. So yes, well above normal. But today you will already start to now see today those temperatures drop. We have another low going in that area. But it's different. Notice the jet stream is now farther to the north. So that's good news. We're not pulling as much as the difference of that warm air and also the cold air behind the cold front. And also notice the jet stream is not lining up with the low. So all of this means, yeah, we still have the threat for tornadic activity, but nothing like what we saw last week. A much better picture and outlook for us on the, the West Coast. We are days. taking a look. A lot of moisture kind of filling in. So we've already been talking about this. The onshore flow or the wind coming off the ocean, pushing those low-level clouds all the way inland. That's what's bringing us this gray in the morning hours. And then as we go through the afternoon, it does start to break a little bit. So we're trying to salvage our afternoons. But overall, it looks like each day we'll see a little bit more cloud so cover than the day warm -up prior. warm-up is on the way for us. Meanwhile, I did want to give you an update in the Midwest. That same cold front is still stalled out in the area. So our severe weather threat, again, remains stretching all the way from D.C. down through Texas. But today, the minimal threat, we're only talking about 30, 40 percent. It does look, however, though, that threat will enhance by tomorrow. So by tomorrow, we're looking for a bullseye threat right around Arkansas and even portions of Missouri. There, by tomorrow, a 70 percent threat for severe weather. Hey, That's thanks for waking up with us this morning. A little cooler out there, maybe some fog in some places. Yes. Uh, let's check in with Andrew Peterson for the latest on our weather conditions. Yeah, what is going on? It looks so much like last weekend, the same thing, beautiful during the week, and then we hit the weekend, and another big low it just parked itself off the coastline. So what does this mean? Yeah, I think we already see it this morning. It's actually just churning up that eddy. We're seeing that marine layer. Again, not just the coastline filling in all the way into the valleys. Again, this is what you can see on the water vapor satellite. There's all that moisture kind of filling in the area as the loop starts over. There you go. And that low that cruised by last night was just enough for the combination there to get a little bit of lift out of the system. So with that, this is what it looks like out towards Malibu. Obviously, we're talking about some light rain and drizzle. That marine there is thick. And it's not going to be the only concern. It's be very tough to clear today. And another little disturbance can move by to the north tonight. So by the evening hours, once again, we could see a repeat event. Wind advisory is also going to be the case with the strong onshore flow. Gus as high as about 55 miles per hour possible now through Monday night the in the high desert. The closures will save $11 million in the next fiscal year of 2011-2012 and $22 million in the following year. Now visitors hoping to go for a hike here at Santa Susana Pass in Chatsworth will instead find signs that look like this one. Trail closed. Seven parks in the Southern California area will be affected. Included in the list are McGrath State Beach near Oxnard and the Salton Sea, which is a popular bird watching destination. In Sacramento, the governor's mansion will now be closed to visitors. Despite 70 closures, 94% of existing revenue will be preserved. But for visitors who depend on parks like this one, it's tough news to hear. It's really unfair because you know that's a it's a great place to just say hey I don't want to I don't want to go to the mall and spend money but let's just go to the park instead you know so we can you know hang out there and just you know cook a cook a steak you know? now it's gone now it's gone we used to go and have picnics there all the time you know in the nice weather I can't do any of that around here for an interactive map of all closures go to abc7.com Indra Petersons is here with that Indra oh the easiest part of the forecasting is now gone what we were able to do earlier on was follow the actual cold front we saw that earlier on bringing the heavier portions of rain down from Orange County all the way up towards San Bernardino now we're looking at is more of a widespread lighter pattern starting to die down so different type of pattern is what we're looking for right now as you can tell even some breaks in the rain even some portions of the area where 
starting to see some sunshine out there. Rainfall rates are starting to decrease even in the mountain area. Snow level still staying pretty high though, about 6,500 feet, although with the cold air in place, it will drop a little bit lower through the overnight hours. Burn area still having a couple trouble spots here. We're starting to see the orange, even that little tiny peak of red, half an inch to three quarter inch is out there, but you can tell the bulk of this staying in the green. Now, if we see thunderstorms though, that's where we have the rainfall rates that could be higher. What we are dealing with, even though the rain is winding down, is still a lot of flooding. Even San Bernardino Riverside County still under flash flood warnings. Six inches, that carries an adult away. Two feet, that carries away even a large SUV. More deaths every year from flooding than all other weather phenomena. So keep that in mind. That includes hurricanes, tornadoes. More people die from this. So this is what we're talking about right now. This morning we had this low scoot by. We watched the cold front itself produce that line of thunderstorms that was widespread, moderate to heavy. That's clearing out of here. And what we're left with is, remember, see this line right here? That's what we were seeing all weekend long, that huge band of moisture fueling into the area. Now you can actually see the low right here spinning all the way across. So the low is moving overhead behind it. Look at all of this. This is how we can tell there's cold air in place. It's the way the clouds look. So we know the cold air is there. What happens if you combine cold air and warm air together? You get a chance for a thunderstorm. It's unstable air. And take a look at the LAX camera. This is where everyone gets confused. They see sunshine. They see the clouds parting. They think the storm is over, but that is not the case. Sun actually is a better chance for thunderstorms. The more sunlight that gets in, the better chance. It actually acts as fuel for a cloud cover and the thunderstorm activity. So the more sunlight you have, the better chance for thunderstorms as long as that cold pool of air is still in place. So that's what we're going to be watching. Keep in mind all those winds as they continue to come out of the south will still produce better enhanced rainfall rates and better chances for thunderstorms across the mountainous areas. So we will continue to watch that. Here's the actual jet stream still producing strong winds. So instead of out of the southwest as this kicks out of here, it is going to come out of the southeast. But notice a nice break. So by tomorrow, we will start to see the clearing we have been waiting for. The other thing we still have in place, the winter storm warning. We are seeing that snow level up there. Two feet most likely at this point unless we have to see a heavy thunderstorm pop just at those top mountain peaks. Otherwise, we're looking for maybe about a foot. Grapevine, if anything, pops. It would be early tomorrow morning for now. No problems there on to the grapevine. But again, those strong winds are particularly particular inches. Still possible to gust high as 60 miles per hour. So better chances for thunderstorms here in the next few hours. A lot of instability out there. Hail still cannot rule that out of the forecast. By tomorrow, everything looks so much better. Even by Friday and Saturday, this chance of rain we're talking about likely just staying north. Maybe a little sprinkle in our area. Leslie Phillips.